So we've got everything that we took off the lumber mill back up on the table for us to route in the pockets for the joists to hang on our deck. One of the best things that we have here at Artistic Timberworks was this 36 by 18 foot work table that we made. Gives us the opportunity to split up on two different projects like Jason is over there finishing last week's deck getting ready for it to be sealed and stained and I'm able to work over here and build a 14 foot deck. Along with this table is that we can put a 40 foot wall together. It just works out perfectly. Now this is the beam where actually our joists are going to sit and I've already marked everything out for the center of where the joist pockets need to be. Now instead of just using a square pocket, we actually cut a dovetail uh, with our router which gives a lot stronger joint and some lateral tension. These are our jig plates that we actually use to, to run our router. And if you see, I have a spacer right here, which runs here and gives me a perfect cut pocket every time. I was actually lucky enough that my cousin owns a company, Dynamic Diamond Metal Fabrication. And I send him all types of jigs like this and he manufactures them for me. This, is the one for the pockets that go on the beam. This is actually the jig that we'll show you later that we use for the joists that actually create the tongue that's going to sit in here. Also with the dovetail bit, you'll see how the two are gonna interlock. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to get this in. I've got my center square line. I have my line here that gives me center. <clears throat> I use a clamp here to just hold everything nice and straight. I take a couple of screws. Now my router is already preset because I've been doing this all week. <clears throat> now you are taking out a lot of meat and you're using a very big bit. So you need to be careful about your machine. It's going to be jittery and move slow. What you need to do is first, we're going to take out all of the excess material. And then at the end, we'll make a pass, a clean pass all the way around to finish the pocket.
need to stop often and clean it out. As you see, I was getting bound up. Since we cut all this wood fresh here in our forest, our timber is wet. As you see, as I routed it here, the different color inside makes it much easier for cutting. But you need to realize it's going to shrink a little bit. Tell I have a little debris right here in the corner that's preventing me from getting a clean path. Now I need to do that five more times on this beam and the same on the other and we'll be done. Once you remove all the screws, it's as simple as that. Your clamp is off. You pull off your guide. I'm trying to show you the best I can of a nice clean cut. You bring it over to your next mark that you've already laid and checked out. Simple as that. You're ready for your next one. Okay, all of the pockets that we just went through are cut and chiseled out and ready to be finished. Jay's over there finishing the knee braces, putting the final touches on before we can stain them. And the last thing I need to do is to match the dovetails for the joist on the main beam. If you remember, we've already marked our centers of where I need to be. So I'm going to get that done. Okay, all the final pockets on the front beam are finished and ready to be sanded and cleaned up. Like Jay's got that whole other package ready to be sealed tomorrow. We're going to talk about end care, tab care. Okay, we're going to actually make a test cut with the other half of our dovetail jig here. These are actually the joists that we're going to be using. Now I know you see this here, but this length is going to get cut down and that'll be gone before we install it. But right now I want to cut a, cut a perfectly straight line here so that our face is perfectly square. We can actually just take our dig. Now I've already made a line right here in the middle of where we're wanting to be. So what I do is I'll take a couple of screws. I'm gonna screw them into these. Then I take my clamp. And now the unit is secure. And what we're doing is we're gonna be taking our dovetail bit and we're gonna be removing this material here, leaving this to slide into our pocket of our main beam. So 
The first thing is I always use this Makita just for my dovetail work. And the awesome part about it, it has this little, uh, let's say, setup gauge for you. Now, I've set them up because when you actually cut this tab here, it needs to be two millimeters short of that pocket so that there's not any pressure of the beams. It needs to be just away. So what we do here, I've got that off. I press my button. We can turn our gauge. Need to give it some slack. We turn our gauge into where our post was there. I'm gonna reclose it and I tighten it with this right here. Cannot move. Then we lock it. So mine's already been preset. Next time that I'm going to be cutting pockets like over there, I'll switch it back. The depth of my bit is already perfect. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to actually just take all this material off. Then I'm actually going to cut this block off and go check it to see if it fits. I'm on the low side of the table. See, I've removed all the material around my gauge right here. I'm going to disassemble this and I'm actually going to cut the piece off and we're going to go check it out. So there's what our piece looks like. See, here's the space that we need in between. That's how that fits. It should sit up just a little bit because this wood is wet. But you can see that it does not. There's no way. We don't even have it set in yet. And there's no moving that. For this purpose, I'm going to show you. We're going to tap it down. Perfectly flush. And you can see how strong this is. Okay, now Jason is applying a product called Anchor Seal, which actually seals the end grains of all these cuts. Now, this is one of the most overlooked pro processes, and people skip it, but we think it's the most important because we're using wet wood, and we're trying to slow down the drying process. So this Anchor Seal acts like a wax and it won't let moisture in or out of it. And you're gonna need to do every tab, anywhere you've cut, put your router, drill the hole, we're actually gonna have that anchor seal on that. We've actually done this already over here, and it's easy to see. You could just rub your finger, and you get like a ball of wax, almost like chapstick. So important. Don't forget, seal all of your cuts.